My name is Shaquan Robinson. My name is Nadia Anderson. You are listening to Power Your Story Podcast Season 2. The show starring the students on regular channels in the high school in Chicago. In this episode, we are sharing personal stories of power and beauty from real lives. This episode features Charmaine, Aria, Shaman, Sonia, and Monique. Additional beats in this episode were created by Carzell Brown on bass drum. And Kenneth Smith. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the show. When I was in South Shore, we used to go to gym, and I hated gym so bad. I did not like gym. And we had to go to gym every day. <laughs> I did not like that gym teacher. <laughs> she was so mean, and she used to yell at us because everybody was talking when she was talking. We used to play tennis, basketball. We, we used to exercise. And when whoever was talking, we had to exercise again. Yeah, and when when she told us to run, I just slowed down. I just started walking. I did not feel powerful. I like it now because I'm at a different school. I don't have gym no more. Hello everyone, this is Aaliyah Rich of Power Your Story Podcast, and I'm here to tell you a story of mine, of me painting the school bench located at Ray Grand School. It was at least four years ago, I was still 16, and I was in our class, in Ms. Kershaw's class, in room four. As I was doing some drawing, Ms. Kirsch had an idea of me painting the school bench. And I was listening to the idea of having to paint the school bench. And I found that as a privilege to do that. It was so amazing knowing that I get to do something real big. It was like the first moment I have wanted to do something big. And I couldn't wait to get started. But before I, I even start to paint the bench... I had to have an idea. It was all white. It was finished like painting. So before I even started, I had to like have ideas. And along the way, before I was painting it, I had ideas of putting uh, Chicago-related things like the Chicago Bull, Blackhawks. I think I had the Cubs on it. Well, the Chicago Bears. It was actually the Chicago Bears. And I also had ideas of Chicago hot dog. I painted the entire city from the Ferris wheel from Navy Pier. I painted flames on the bottom of the bench to represent the Chicago fire of the tragedy that we're most famous for. And (laughs) I spent months painting it. I painted it from all the way from top to bottom before... I even painted, I sketched each drawing. And once I sketched each drawing, I just painted each one of them from blue to black to red to a bit of orange for the hot dog. Uh, As I was still painting, I learned to just, like, try to experiment, like, what would be good to add on a Chicago bench that would represent both our city and our school so I painted uh, each idea of, and well as searched on Google about our city, as well as like famous pictures of like Black Hawk, like what the Black Hawk symbol look like is an Indian man, and well as like the Chicago Bull sign, what's like our most famous sign in this picture of the Chicago Bull. I think it was Lane Benny, <laughs> and. As I was still painting, it took me like two months. I think I started in November and went on from December all the way to January is when I just completely finished. 
Because day after day after day, when I go to the art class, I focus on the bench. And ever since that day, I work my entire days off just to finish one bench. And each day, I focus on from top to bottom, from each character on the bench to the entire city, and well as the flames. The flames idea, I thought, was the most brilliant part about it. Because the flames of Chicago Fire was was something that you know in history about how the entire city burned, and once it burned, we began to rebuild the city, and that's like a powerful message of how stuff may bring us down, but we can always rise up, and knowing how we rise up is the best part about us, and that's something really powerful. And as soon as the bench was finished, I was like, my God, I can't believe I did it. And I kept taking pictures with my father with the bench as well as, like, presenting outside. Because when it got outside, I was completely amazed. Because right now, it's like 2017. It's starting to fade a little bit. You can't see my name at all or and some of the pictures are fading off. I think it would need a little more paint. Hopefully I can, like, fix it someday. And uh, I don't know. I doubt you can take it off a bench once it's glued on there, but hopefully it will be better. Hello, my name is Shamar Gibson, and I'm going to tell you about the time I ran into a fence and a stop sign. So, here we go. So, um, I was a lot more younger at the time. Well, I was around 15 or 16. I was still going to King College Prep when I, you know. But I was coming from GameStop. At the time, I had my Xbox 360. You know, Halo was like the newest game out. So I was just riding my bike back to my auntie's house, but I saw this one girl, and she was so fine, so fine. And, you know, me being the person I am, it's hard to take my eyes off any beautiful female. I wasn't looking, but something told me to turn my head slightly for it. As soon as I turned my head, I ran into the stop sign, you know, popped off or whatnot. I fell down, um, got back up. I think she saw me fall. Um, I think she laughed. That could have been my chance to get up, you know, hook up with her. But me being the little scary kid I was, I did not. So, yeah, that happened. Then after that, I just, you know, got back up, broke my back again, not trying to look crazy. That day was a very, very, very painful day. Another time, it was another girl. She was extremely beautiful. Was not paying attention. Then I ran into a fence. Wasn't as bad as the pole, but still pretty bad because it had like barbed wire right there. So that was pretty, you know, also painful. Yeah, I I, I have to really pay attention when I'm riding a bike because I get easily distracted by women. My auntie saw me. She said, are you okay? I said, yeah. Then she laughed at me. And I told you, you're probably the worst auntie ever. I just gonna laugh at your nephew. That's so petty. After that, you know, it was a pretty chill day. I just played my game. I was starting on drum line. It was hard to me. I was nervous. I'm still nervous. But I was natural because the teacher told me, like, it was natural because I never played drums before. It was my first time playing it, and I was liking it because I was, like, well, I was waiting for a long time to get in on the drum line. When I get mad or sad or whatever, I play it and I forget stuff, and I like playing because sometimes I forget everything and I like playing drums. It's my style because I grow up with music because my dad was always playing um, a band, always, like on a weekend. He always take us and I was like into music but then I, I started to play, I was liking it. I feel powerful at that time. 
Pumba, pumba in the pickling, pumba, pumba in the pickling. Malik, can I ask you a couple questions about riding your bike? Oh, sure. I heard that you ride your bike to school almost every day. Oh, yeah. It's almost as uh, every day. And other bike riders, they could not even defeat me, which is they try because I go so fast. I ride 100 miles. That's how far I ride every day. I don't care if it's raining or not. It don't matter to me. I taught myself at five years old without training wheels. When I was younger, I had to fall off. I had got a little cut. And so that's how I learned. Well, when I ride so fast, I'm going to show everybody that I'm old school and no one cannot defeat me. My bike never died. It runs 24 hours a day. I ride it on the west side every day. Ride my bike on the west side instead of north side. North side is weak. I, I do have power, actually, but it's in my legs, though. <laughs> because I prove to people that I'm old school all day long. Old school means someone have knowledge and power. That's what it is. So I'm going to share this with you. If you had your bike today, I would race you outside right now, and I will take $500 out of your wallet. That's how much you would win if you won the race against me? Yeah. I know for sure you would win. Today's show was produced by... Charmaine, Aria, Shaman, Sonia, and Monique. With production supports from After School Matters and the Creative and Poster Studios. Subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, or Stitcher Radio. Check us out at PowerYawkStarPodcast.com and on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks again for listening. See you next time. Peace out.